Let's talk a little bit more about setup. And as we touched in the first video, we showed the sketch that we were going to be building. I need to get this sketch into the modeling environment. And that's a very simple process of dragging and dropping the bug underscore underlay dot JPEG from your working files into the modeling window. And you'll notice that a dialog box will pop up. And I'm going to bring this in as a picture frame. And picture frame is really the only option that I use here because it has some options that make it advantageous. So I'm going to place this actually in the front view. And I'm just going to drag and drop it. I'm holding down the shift key to make sure that it retains the original aspect ratio of the drawing. I don't want it to shift or distort. So as I drag out, I'm just holding shift and that will constrain the proportions on this and make sure that it doesn't get skewed. So if we go to the perspective view, you'll notice that one of the cool things about picture frame is it drops the image into the modeling window. And if I click on this and go to the properties tab, which if it's not open, you can hit the F3 key, you'll notice that there's some options here and I wanna focus on the material. So I'm going to go to the material. You'll notice that it's highlighted here. And if I want to dim this because this is a little overpowering in its contrast right now, I'm just going to go to transparency and I'm going to drag the transparency up a little bit. And you'll notice that the model just starts fading away. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks now. I can deselect and rotate around and take a look at it. But what I need to determine is how big is this thing? And I'm going to go to the front view. And even though this drawing doesn't have any dimensions on it, I've kind of predetermined that I want this object to be about five inches long. So what I'm going to do is just come in here very quickly and draw a line. I'm going to snap to the grid by turning grid snap on. And I'm going to pick there. I'm going to shut grid snap off. And I'm going to just type five for five units. And in this case, we know we're working in inches. So when we type five, we're getting five inches. And I'm just going to drag a line straight up here. And then I'm going to drag another line right up here. And so basically all I've done, and you can do this with a box or any other thing that you want to do, but I prefer lines because it's a little bit easier to navigate. So now I'm going to click on my picture frame, which is still active in the background. I haven't locked it or assigned it to a layer. And I'm just going to move it until the bumper lines up with the front. My wheels are kind of lined up. You know, the sketch is a little stylized, so it's not going to line up perfectly. But we just need to get oriented in space here. So now I'm going to scale this drawing, and I'm going to use the scale command, and I'm going to pick my start point right on that line, and I'm going to drag back to my bumper, and then I'm going to snap into this back line here. So I know I'm at five dimensions, and I can double check that if I'm paranoid. I always tend to triple verify everything. And you can see that we're at five units, in this case inches. So we've got this drawing in the environment here, and I know it's set to the right scale. So in this case, I can actually just delete this. But if I pan around the model, you'll notice that it's in the perspective window. But if I go to the front view, it's here. If I go to the top view, I don't have anything. Also, if I go to the right or the left views, I don't have anything either. So I need to remedy that because I need reference images pretty much all the way around this model. It's really simple to do. Basically, all I'm going to do is pick this plane. I'm going to turn on Gumball, and I'm going to copy and paste using Control-C and Control-V. And then I'm going to double click on one of the Gumball manipulators, in this case the Rotate. And I'm going to just type in 90. This plane is going to turn 90 degrees. And then I can go around my model, and basically I'm now in my right view, which in this case is probably going to be the rear end. So I'm going to pull this over until my center line lines up go back to my perspective view. And in this case, I'm going to leave it kind of tucked off to the side here because I don't want it to be in the way when I'm modeling. I'm going to make a copy of this by clicking on the manipulator, in this case in the X direction, and I'm going to just tap the Alt key. And you'll notice a little plus shows up. That basically allows me to copy this. And now I'm going to go to my left view. And I'm going to pull my front view till it lines up. And this is going to be a little chaotic until we get it organized, but I just want to show you how I typically set this stuff up. So I've got my rear view, I've got my front view, I've got my side view. I need a top. So I'm going to click this again, double click on manipulator. And you'll notice on the manipulator, see the direction of these arrows? This is the direction that it's going to rotate by default. This is the positive number direction. 
So in this case, I actually want to go in the negative direction. So I'm going to type negative 90. The plane is going to rotate. Now I actually made a mistake there, which I don't mind making because if I make the mistakes, you don't have to. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to copy and paste this first. Then I'm going to rotate negative 90 and I'm going to go to my top view. Hold this over till my top view is in about the right spot. Go back to my perspective and I'm going to drag it up here just so it's out of the way. So now I've got these planes in space, but they're all active. They're all selectable and I don't necessarily want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign each one of these a layer. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I can turn them on and off individually. If I assign them all to a layer, they'd either all be on or all be off. And that's not necessarily what I want. So I'm going to rename this layer by right clicking on it. And these are going to be, let's make this front. And I'm going to just pick the object. I'm going to right click and change object layer. So now I can turn this on and off. I can also lock it, which means I can't select it anymore. Okay, so let's do the same thing with these. I'm going to rename, right click, rename to top, pick the top one, right click, change object layer, and we'll do the same thing with the other two. So we'll do right and rename this to left. So now I can pick all of these by shift clicking and then I can lock them all and then none of them can be selected. However, I can turn them all on and off. So let's just start with the side view for now and we'll proceed into the next video and we'll talk about how to set up file tolerances and all sorts of things like that.